everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to a video that has been consistently giving me a few problems. <sighs> Love living by the sea. Oh, no big deal, there's just a massive shard of glass in the bottom of this box. Just found another shard of glass in between my toes. Yay. So over the course of this video, you might just see my sanity drift away into the abyss. However, I'm gonna salvage this video. Long story short, I decided to do a thrift DIY challenge about a month or so ago. And I started the projects and some of them turned out quite well, which I'll show you in this video. However, some of them, not so much. And this box of stuff has been sat in my office taunting me for the last few weeks. So I've decided to, instead of scrapping this video, go back in and try and make something out of the DIYs that failed and show you guys the projects that actually came through. So let's jump in and see what we can do with this. <laughs> Let's start off with this mirror that I picked up for $3.99. It's a great simple piece with a lot of DIY potential. So I started by cutting six pieces of rope because I'm gonna braid the pieces of rope. I made sure they were all about two lengths of the circumference of the mirror and then I used a bit of hot glue to secure them in place. I decided to add two pieces together because I'm using two pieces of rope for, oh, burnt my finger, two pieces of rope for each section of the braid. So I ended up with six and I glued them each down two by two. As you can see, I'm also cutting the ends of the rope to make sure they're nice and neat so there's no little flyaway bits. And then I just started braiding all the way around the mirror. Like I said, I'm using two pieces for each section. This is because it lays flatter on the surface of the mirror and it's a bit wider so we get more of a brim or an edge around the mirror. So I just continue to do this using a little bit of hot glue to secure it in place underneath every so often so that it wasn't gonna shift around or anything. It took a while, but when I got to the end, I was ready to secure it in place. So I just used a little bit of hot glue and I took each of the separate sections of rope and twisted them in the direction they were traveling. So two of them I ended up putting underneath the mirror just for a more natural look. And lastly, to cover the holes in the glass, I just used a bit of glue and some push pins and I laid them in place. This way there's no ugly holes for where the screws are meant to go. And this is the finished result. It's a pretty simple DIY. You can do this to any mirror or any photo frame and it doesn't take very long at all. This next project gave me a lot of hassle but it started off as a 50 pence lampshade. So this is what I like to call the ramen noodle lampshade. This project didn't go well from the start. So here's what went right with the project. First of all, I used the scissors to just get in there and cut all of the excess of the lamp off. I didn't want the shade part, I just wanted the metal. So you're gonna need to do this if you recreate the non-failed version of this DIY. I noticed that the two metal pieces weren't attached, so I decided to create this weird contraption using barbecue skewers. It wasn't very good. I added insult to injury by then tying on these pieces of wool and then this happened. Okay, we have a slight problem. <laughs> I tried another method where I used wool to connect the pieces, but this was pretty awful as well. <laughs> oh, but wait, it gets worse. So then I had the great idea of brushing it out with a comb to separate all the little fibers in the wool. And I started this section right here. As you can see, it all kind of twists around where it's been curled up in the ball of wool for so long. And it just looks like noodles. Um, or one of those Dulux dogs maybe. So I'm gonna take this all apart and I'm gonna do something different to it. It's not gonna defeat me. I'm not gonna let it. Let's take this monstrosity apart, shall we? I hate this project. To save all of this going into the bin, I'm gonna reuse it by stuffing it into another DIY, which I'll show you guys in a minute. 
So for attempt number two or number three, who knows at this point, I ended up going out and buying a lot of rope because rope just holds up so much nicer than wool. It looks so much better. So I just folded the rope in half and looped it around the frame and this is how it's starting to come together. Already a visible improvement. I don't know if you can see this, but I've propped it up on a Tupperware box just to give it like an extra two inches of height and I've centered it so now I can start tying the bottom. With the frame propped up, I was then able to tie all of the pieces to the bottom. This was a bit tricky and it looked a bit messy at first, but I just kept going and I kept trying to straighten them out. The thing you might want to do with this is tie all of the knots in the same direction. I wish I had done this. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Just make sure to tie the knots as tightly as possible to pull the rope as taut as you can. Quick update, I'm using my glue gun to secure the knots at the bottom because otherwise they start drifting and doing this, which we don't want. With all of the knots glued in place, I then made a very dangerous choice to start unraveling the rope. Deja vu from earlier with the wool, but it looks so much better with the rope and it was just the ends that I tasseled out, I guess you can say. And I think it looks really nice. It's got kind of a boho feel to it. So this is what it looks like in place in my bedroom next to the bed. And I think it turned out pretty well considering the first attempt. Let's never talk about the first attempt again. <laughs> Moving on, I found this post catching basket which you put under your letterbox in the charity shop for 250 and uh, I thought I could DIY it. So for this project, I wanted to create kind of like a little desk caddy for some storage on your desk or a table, just like a little shelf. So I started by cutting a piece of plywood down to size to fit inside of the post catching box. Right, here is my piece of wood cut perfectly to size. I just need to figure out how I'm going to attach it. So it's gonna sit kind of like this and I'm thinking perhaps I can hold it in place with a couple of screws. So I'm just gonna have a play around with it. All of the sides of the basket were kind of falling apart. So I ended up using some super glue just to make sure that the metal would stay intact and it wouldn't fall to pieces. To install my piece of wood, I just used a couple of screws and then screwed them in with a screwdriver and then I would rest them on the bars of the grid, as you can see here. I ended up staining the wood in this kind of mahogany colour because I thought it was looking pretty similar to one of my recent IKEA hacks, so I wanted to switch it up a little bit and I really love the colour of this. Oh, and lastly, I pushed back these annoying little hooks on the front and then it was done. You can put it on your desk or you could even mount it on the wall if you want. It's just a place to store little knickknacks and bits and bobs and it looks just like one that I saw on the Urban Outfitters website recently. However, this one's a bit more of a budget friendly option. It only costs £2.50 and some scrap wood. <laughs> So this is our last project of the day. I picked up three of these cushions and some drop cloth in the charity shop. I washed all of the pieces for this project, but then I realized I really had to iron the drop cloth because it got very wrinkled. Once that was done, I laid it out on the floor, folded in half and measured how many pieces I could actually cut out of this thing and whether or not I could make a floor cushion. I'll show you the measurements in a minute, but I did cut my pieces to size and I just about squeezed enough out of this one piece of fabric. So I do have just enough fabric to make a floor cushion. However, I'm doing a strip that goes around it to make it into a box. I don't have a long enough piece, so I'm gonna have to make two side pieces and sew them together. You could do this one for each side, so you could do four, or if you have enough fabric, you can do a long strip around the whole thing. With the pieces cut, I laid them on the floor and pinned them into place. And as you can see, I do have a little bit of excess on that right hand side, that's my seam allowance. So I pinned the first piece in place and I'm not really gonna pin this next piece, I'm just gonna show you how it's supposed to look so you get an idea of how we're creating the piece. But this is what it would look like. And then I quickly sewed together both of the sides of my sewing machine. So this is what's come out of my sewing machine. And as you can see, I've got an extra half an inch seam allowance for my side pieces. So to join them together, you want to open it up so it's right side out and you've got the seam folded there. And then you're going to place your next side piece on top and literally sew a line down there. That way when it's folded over, the seams will match on the outside. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> 
I've gotten bored of using my pins, so I'm literally just holding it together where the two edges meet. So if you feel like you're confident enough to do that, go ahead. If not, you can keep pinning it. So with this first piece done, this is probably just gonna look like a massive piece of fabric to you, but hopefully you can see it kind of looks like it's taking the shape of a box. And make sure not to secure these last two side pieces until the very end, because this is where we're gonna stuff it. Just quickly, if I turn it the right way out, you can see, hopefully, that it's kind of coming together. I'm going to turn it back the wrong way around and sew the last square on the same way as I did the first, and then we're gonna stuff it. So back to the sewing machine, I just lined up that second square and sewed it into place. Here is my finished floor cushion shell. Um, I'm gonna turn it inside out and see what it looks like. Remember the opening that we didn't wanna sew up? It's gonna come in handy right now. With the fabric turned the right way out, I was able to stuff the piece and I just used the inside filling of those three 50 pence cushions that I found. This is such an affordable way to fill a big piece like this because batting and other inserts can be very, very expensive. Remember these? They're going in too. This is the point in time you really want to spend some time fluffing up the inside, making sure it's all in the corners and making sure there's no funky lumps going on in here. So check it from every angle and make sure that it's nice and flat. And then you can hand stitch the opening closed. Not like this. I will show you in a minute. <laughs> so fold in the extra pieces of seam allowance and then sew this together so it's nice and tightly shut. After this I decided to add a couple of tassels to it because it was looking a bit plain. You've seen me make tassels a million times before so I'll try and make this quick but I'm just using this passport holder because it's nice and sturdy and it's the same shape for each of the tassels. You guys know the drill by now, take a piece of wool, slide it underneath, tie it to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere, take another piece of wool, tie it about a quarter of the way from the top, cut the ends, there you go, you have a tassel, make three more, and then you have one for each corner. Ooh. And then all you have to do is sew them into place. And you can decorate this however you'd like, but I just decided tassels would look nice and simple, and this thing is, oh my God, so comfortable. <laughs> Right, so that's everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you've had any colossal DIY fails recently and what they were. Let me know that I'm not the only one and I'm not alone. And if you did anything to salvage them or if you just pretended like it never happened. Anyway, with all of that being said, I hope you guys have a great week. Happy DIYing and I'll see you next time. Bye.